Hey everybody, back today again for a new video. I wanted to take a look at the year 1971 one last time. Uh, about a month ago I did a uh, ranking of albums from 1971 with Gary, Physical Format Rock and Roll, and Steve from All the Worlds of Stage. And we re each ranked our top 10 albums from that particular year, being its 50th anniversary this year. So I also wanted to look at some of the singles that came out, the uh, the pop hits, as it were. And uh, I decided to rank the uh, all the number one songs on the Billboard charts from that year. There were only 19 number one songs, believe it or not, 52 weeks. Only 19 tunes made it to number one. A lot of them were uh, three weeks at the top or four, in some cases, as many as six weeks one song uh, landed at number one on the Billboard chart. So there's only 19 I'm going to rank. Uh, I got my resource book out here, which is the pop annual of all the uh, songs that made the uh, top uh, 100, actually, in Billboard single list. So we're, we're singling out a finite number of 19 tunes, 1971. Uh, there's some real duds in here, but there's some good songs, too. A lot of songs, surprisingly, uh, a lot of the staples that you hear on FM radio, such as Stairway to Heaven was never a single, so that's not going to appear, or uh, Won't Get Fooled Again, Baba O'Reilly, of course, from The Who, which were both great albums from that year. They're not going to show up here. Uh, What's Going On, the Marvin Gaye classic, only made it to number two, so that's not a factor. And also John Lennon's Imagine, I thought for sure it was a number one hit. It was not. It was a number three hit. So that's not going to make the cut as well. So I'm going to start at number 19 and work my way up to my favorite song uh, of that year based on, you know, what hit number one. Uh, last and certainly least, number 19, Go Away Little Girl by Donny Osmond. Complete uh, sugar pop, uh, schlock, whatever you want to call it. It's got nothing appealing to it at all. It was a, a cover of a, a remake, actually, of a Steve Lawrence tune from 1962. So go away, little girl Donnie. Osmond is number 19. Number 18, uh, a, a notch above, <laughs> One Bad Apple by the Osmond Brothers. Complete bubblegum pop. So Donnie uh, found a way to get himself on the 18 and the 19 uh, ranking here. Number 17, more uh, crap. Knock Three Times by Tony Orlando and Dawn. Enough said. Number 16, Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves. Made it to number one by Cher. Uh, backed by the Wrecking Crew. Was actually nominated for a Grammy. That's not my cup of tea, but I have to rank it. So that's where it's going to land at number 16. Number 15, One Ads by Honeycomb. Sort of a one-hit wonder. An R&B soul pop group out of Detroit. That's a catchy uh, million-selling tune. I actually kind of liked it when it was out. Going to put it in the one ads. I was 14 back in 1971, so I'm familiar with all these songs. Um, nine, number 14, Brand New Key by Melanie. Melanie was this hippie chick out of Greenwich Village, had the long hair and wore the, uh, the hippie garb of the day. She was a songwriter, too. She wrote this song. There's some sexual innuendo in here. I've got a brand new pair of roller skates. You got a brand new key. Uh, I like the tune. Made it to number four. Or, uh, it's 14 on my list. It was a number one hit, as all these were. Number 13, Indian Reservation by the Raiders. Formerly Paul Revere and the Raiders. Now they're called the Raiders. Mark Lindsay was the lead singer. It's the lament of the uh, Cherokee tribe. Good lyrics, solid tune. Cherokee people, Cherokee tribe. Number 12, on the list of number one tunes from 71. Family Affair, Sly and the Family Stone. This was their last top 10 hit. They were more of a late 60s uh, funk, soul, psych kind of band. Uh, they played at Woodstock as well. Very funky, psychedelic soul would be the best way to go with Family Affair. And this, uh, this is a good solid so uh, song at number 12. Number 11, just outside of the top 10. Big hit. This was the one that lasted six weeks at number one on the charts. And this is Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. Uh, the biggest hit of Three Dog Night's career. And they had a lot of really, really big songs. 
they were all over the charts from about, uh, oh, I'd say 69 to 74, 75. They just were all over the place. Three Dog Night, big group. Joy to the World was their biggest hit, and that's at number 11. Number 10, singer-songwriter James Taylor, You've Got a Friend. This was written by Carol King. It appeared on her Tapestry album. James is the one that uh, James Taylor is the one that had the big hit with it, and it cracks the top ten for me. Number nine is Carol King, and that's "It's Too Late," Grammy Award winner, great song, very personal song. "It's Too Late" off the Tapestry album. Number nine on my list. Number eight, Isaac Hayes, the theme from Shaft. Yeah, it was a number one hit. Title track from the 1971 movie Shaft, which was a black a black exploitation film. Uh, it's a cool movie. Uh, actually, the song is better than the movie, I have to say. Who is a man who would risk his neck for a brother man? Shaft, John Shaft. Can you dig it? Great song. Number seven, uh, Paul McCartney. Al Admiral, excuse me, Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey off the Ram album. This was a uh, surprising number one hit a couple years after the Beatles broke up. Uh... Some people come down hard on the song. It's kind of two songs in one. I always liked it. Hands across the water, heads above the sky. Number six on the list. The Mighty Temptations. Just My Imagination. A great, smooth, soulful ballad. Eddie Kendricks on lead vocals. His last song recorded with the group before he broke off in the solo career. All right, now we're down to the top five. Number one songs of 1971, in my opinion. Number five, Bee Gees, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Of course, this is five or six years before they got into the disco phase, written by Barry and Robin Gibb. Uh, great harmonies, and I uh, always liked the song, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Number four, George Harrison, My Sweet Lord. Big hit off the amazing All Things Must Pass album. Great, great song. Spiritual, uplifting. Uh, at this time, George was putting out better material than both John and Paul. Believe it or not, he had stored up all these songs that they wouldn't let him get on the Beatles albums. And he put out All Things Must Pass. And uh, My Sweet Word was the monster hit off of that album. Number three, a classic. Me and Bobby McGee by Janis Joplin off the Pearl album. Uh, this is an album that put, it was released three months after Janice died, written by Chris Christopherson. Incredibly passionate vocal performance by Janice Joplin. Her signature song made it to number one on the charts, and it comes in at number three. Down to the final two. Number two, I'm going to go with Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones off the Sticker, Sticky Fingers album. Uh, flat out rocking number. I know it's not politically correct right now, but at the time, a great song. Mick uh, Taylor and Keith Richards on the guitars, just killing it. Fantastic song. I think it's one of the Stones' greatest songs, and uh, it comes in at number two. But for me, the quintessential best song of 1971 that made it to number one on the charts still holds up today. Maggie May by Rod Stewart. That was five weeks at number one. Uh, it's vintage Rod Stewart. He was at the absolute peak of his career uh, from the Every Picture Tells a Story album, a great album all the way through. But this was a great song. And it, I, you can still hear it today, and it's, it's, a, it's a killer tune. So that's my look at 1971, the number one songs, the 19 number one songs that came out that particular year. I uh, hope you enjoyed if you have some uh, feedback, I'd like to hear it. Which of those 19 songs for you is the best? Which is the worst? And uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.